Welcome back to O'Connor Tonight, and it is Christmas season, and if you haven't found your Christmas gifts yet, you might want to start thinking about that. Now, some of us have some little ones in our lives that we probably want to get a really, really good gift for, and what is better than the gift of knowledge? Uh, here to join me to talk about her new book series, the Heroes of Liberty series, we have Bethany Mandel, who, again, edits this wonderful book series and is also a contributing writer to Deseret News. Bethany, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I just love these books. I think Thanks. they're beautiful on the inside. They're absolutely gorgeous. We can check that out. Like, the art is just very, very nice here. It's just... It's wonderful, but what got you writing these books or uh, editing these books? What, what got you into this, this sort of thing? Yeah, so we saw a hole in the marketplace. If you walk into a library, if you walk into a bookstore, it's wall-to-wall -wall gender and race ideology. Mm. And you know it, we know the, the situation in schools, but lesser known, but equally sort of scary situation is in the libraries and in the book industry, and they reward extremism and woke, right. and woke content. And we said half the country doesn't subscribe to that worldview, and there is there is money to be made, right, right. <laughs> and there are minds to be molded also. Sure. And it's you know it's equally sort of as capitalists we want to make money, <laughs> but it's also you know we we want to impart our values to our children, and the the publishing industry as it stands now, and the library systems are not allowing that to happen. Sure. So, I mean, it's, it seems like this is the beauty of capitalism combined with conservatism, right? Yes. Where we've got all these things because, well, Elon Musk is this one, but then we also have, you know, the man himself, Ronald yeah. Reagan. Yeah. I, I guess, how do you select the people that you want to focus on these books? There's so many people out there. Who do you yeah. choose? So right now we, we have the problem of we have too many heroes and we have a hard time narrowing them down. Sure. Um, so we, we've tried to choose people who are sort of in the public eye right now, mm -hmm. like Elon Musk, like Amy Coney Barrett, like Tom a soul. Um, and then also sort of dig into history with Mark Twain and Clara Barton. Uh, Harriet Tubman is another great selection that we've made recently. And we just sort of want to cover all of those bases and so that our kids have a full spectrum uh, sort of education of these are the people that you should know about that you're probably not right, going to read about right. otherwise. I mean, it does seem like these are some selections that could, so like, for example, you mentioned Amy Coney Barrett because yeah. she's politically relevant. Have you gotten any pushback from people that think this is inappropriate or think that these are, are bad people to be focusing on? Yeah, absolutely. So two of my favorite stories, I, I, one of them is pretty easy. One of our, the heroes that we focus on mm. was Rush Limbaugh. Okay. So obviously. <laughs> there, no, not controversial <laughs> at all. Oh, totally, totally chilled at all, but it's obviously one of our most popular books. Sure, um, but we try to donate books to my mm. local school system, Montgomery County, Maryland, which is you don't get more blue than that. And they put in writing in their refusal, and this was a story on Fox News mm. that, uh, and it you know got picked up everywhere that. Uh, we promote American values, pro-American values, and so that was Sorry, objectionable. You, you promote pro-American values, the, the, the books. The books do, and so the fact that the publisher promotes pro-American values was enough for the school system to deny our request to donate books. <laughs> I mean, again, like it's the fact that the school system was yeah. even telling you, ah, oh, well, this was a pro-American agenda, so yep. we can't do. I guess sort of un unintentionally maybe revealing yeah. that they were endorsing yeah. a non-pro-American agenda. Yeah, and, and that same week, Fox News also broke a story mm -hmm. about the fact that they were requiring LGBT Q books in school systems and that parents were unable to opt out. Sure. So this is the situation in schools and this is the situation in libraries. It's perfectly encapsulated that they're requiring picture books for kindergartners about literally drag queens mm -hmm. and they won't accept a book. And we, we, we didn't try to donate Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> we we right. went pretty uncontroversial. Alexander Hamilton, mm -hmm. Amy Coney Barrett, who's a local hero. Sure, sure. And, you know, not, not good enough. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I noticed that you also have one on John Paul the second, which is is an interesting one. So yeah. there is a religious angle to these as well. What, what are some of the values you're kind of hoping these books impart? So it actually isn't really religious. Oh. It's it's about sort of his impact um, it, politically. I, I'm Jewish, mm. and I I have a hard time finding books about figures like JP two, who uh, you know was incredibly influential and incredibly important in world history, but that aren't written necessarily from a religious point of view. And mm. so we wanted more of a secular look at like, this is this person's impact. He wasn't just this incredible religious leader, which of course he was, but there was so much more to his story with communism. And, um, and so we wanted to tell that story 
um, from a different perspective than we thought that there were children's books out there about mm. him already. Do you see this as causing a revolution in the type of literature that children are going to be able to consume? Because you're right, a lot of what yeah. I think kids are seeing these days, I used to work as a teacher, and a lot of the books that I saw in the classroom yeah. were things like uh, Call Me Jazz or mm -hmm. something yeah. about anti-racist baby, right? Mm -hmm. Like all of these very specifically politicized books yeah. in one direction. Do you see this as sort of upsetting that, that balance or do you see this as sort of like a counter weapon that people who are already going to be kind of wanting to consume material like John Paul II yeah. are going to read. Where do you see that fitting in? So I, I think that it's more of the latter. I mm -hmm. think that we're the the odds, if we're being realistic, of us, you know, taking over the school system with Heroes of Liberty books are not great because they have that firewall up. Mm. Um, but we're hoping that parents will take back bedtime, and that this is how parents and grandparents are going to be able to push back against this wokeization that's happening in schools, on, uh, on television, pretty much everywhere kids are turning. They're being indoctrinated into this work, woke world view. And this is our way of sort of saying, you know, there is an alternative and, and kids need to hear the other side and they need mm -hmm. to hear positive pro-American values and not just patriotism, but just, you know, what we believe as conservatives. Uh, the Thomas Sowell book really focuses on the fact that he pulled himself up by his bootstraps mm -hmm. and tells that story. Um, Ronald Reagan, we talk a lot about how, you know, he's just a, an incredibly kind and compassionate person. And um, and we, we wanted kids to know about Mark Twain because part of what is happening in the schools is they're not just introducing all of these woke books, but they're taking classic literature off mm -hmm. the shelves. And so we wanted to introduce kids to Mark Twain to say, you know, there's these great books that they're not going to read you anymore. And so that's sort of the gateway drug. Sure. This <laughs> is the gateway drug. To, to Mark Twain. Sure, definitely. Well, take a, a small hit of Mark Twain off of the uh, Heroes of Liberty book. I guess I'm also curious, this is, seems to be a very international series. I yeah. mean, John Paul II clearly wasn't American. It seems like you have Winston Churchill, Winston Churchill and Churchill, Margaret yeah. Thatcher too, which I forgot to bring because totally okay. they're in my three-year-old's bed. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, I mean, I was about to say that. It's one of the things that's the most important is like, what do kids think about this? And folks, I, I think these are the, the home copies that she uses. Are. <laughs> these are very, very well-loved books. How do kids respond to these? Do they like them? or they, they love them. So I just remembered, and I was thinking like, oh man, I didn't bring Winston Churchill. And it's because it is literally in my three-year-old's bed. She loves the Winston Churchill book, and she loves the Elon Musk book. Mm. And, and a lot of it is the illustrations. We really poured a lot in a, into the illustrations to make them engaging. And so, you know, we say that the reading level is between 6 and 12, but my three-year-old sure. is obsessed with Elon Musk and Winston Churchill as a result. And, you know, it's fun also to have your three-year-old running around right. talking about <laughs> Winston Churchill and Elon Musk. Right. And that's what you get when you order Heroes of Liberty. Yeah, no, I'm really glad that you brought up... Uh, Winston Churchill as well. And, and, and honestly, I think that the fact that we have these books now, the fact that we have something that is able to prove that, look, this guy is worth learning about. Yeah. He's not just some figure. I mean, Elon Musk, obviously, quite relevant right now. But, you know, John Paul II has been dead for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Clara Barton, right? You know, yeah. this feminist icon, this thing, yep. like a, a real feminist. But this idea that we can look to our, our people from the past and kind of understand where they're from and, like, impact are yeah. today. I want to get you the chance to, how do we find these books? Are they available in bookstores? Where do we have to go yeah. to get these books? So they're actually Barnes and Noble. And you know, this is how we're going to take back corporate you know, publishing is to send that message to people mm. like Barnes and Noble that there is a market. And so I encourage people to go out and look at our books in person at Barnes and Noble Books. They're all over the country. Um, they can also go to heroesofliberty.com. And we made a special promo code for your listeners. There you go. Yeah. So what is, that, what is that promo code? So listen up, guys. Larry20. Larry20. So yeah. if people want to go to uh, heroesofliberty.com, correct? Yep. And yep. use the promo code Larry20. Yep. They get can get a bundle of our books that we've already sold. And you can also get a subscription. So we release one a month. Mm -hmm. And so upcoming is probably our most requested one. One. Oh. Clarence Thomas is coming ah, up. Ah, um, So yeah, so we're gonna have some really good ones, but we have one a month coming out. So if folks want to sort of buy the gift that keeps on giving, they can get a subscription, or they can just buy a bundle of you know eight or twelve or sure. however many books they want. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, Bethany, thank you so much for coming. And guys, I really do encourage you to check these books out. They are absolutely gorgeous, full of really interesting information about some people that your kids are probably gonna want to know. Well, with that, thank you, Bethany, so much. More to come on O'Connor tonight. Thank you.